Can you right. give maybe an example of, of what that looks like when, when like the expression I heard recently is densifying into, into matter, um, what that could actually be? Well, it could be a lot of different things. Uh, if we go, <clears throat> if we go with the ancient wisdom that I'm teaching, which is Sanskrit, right? And if we go with where that came from 5,000 years ago, it was people meditating in chambers and chanting and visualizing a flower growing outside of the pyramid and walking outside and the flower had physically been created. Mm. Like it's that kind of physical power. We are, I, people don't like when I say this because it feels like witchy, but it's not witchy, but we're casting spells, right? So we literally can physically create form. And that's the extreme case where you have really practiced and honed the craft. Right? There's a certain level as you practice this, these, these practices and this, these teachings where you can actually, you are the Godhead in form, which is not, not true of everybody right now, <laughs> but you can actually build and build upon this power and ultimately earn the ability to create the world. But that's the extreme case. Let's go into that's what easy. everyone's experiencing. But, okay, but really everywhere. quick, I just want to hear like when you want to make something, when you want to use your voice to make the physical reality like what what do you do mm -hmm. okay so there's one one example if it's say like i'm going to use the typical example which is not normally what i'm asking for but let's just say your your people out there need to make some money right that's what everyone's thinking about these days i need to get that thing i don't have the cash for it or i can't pay my rent or whatever we need money uh physical prayer vocal prayer uh, i pray in the eight direction I pair my breath and my voice and I send it into the eight directions out loud. And I magnetize that into my reality and it works, right? So first is most people don't even wanna ask for it. That's the first thing. They don't believe they're worthy of it so they won't actually state it, right? The first thing is actually owning what you need and what you want and being able to feel your ability to get that thing. And then not God, please give this to me but instead in an affirmative, I have this, this is mine, right? So there's a certain energy that has to go along with it. If you're constantly, and you know this from the law of attraction stuff and your voice is just a major magnifier for that law of attraction. But if you go out and say, please God make peace, right? <laughs> then you're asking God to do something that you have to first create within you. But if you can within you hold the feeling of peace and say the world is peaceful, you will start to create that reality. The other thing is in relationships, right? So we're all doing this together and how we speak to each other makes such a huge difference, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to physically manifest your world is to, to bring all the energies at, at, in service to the thing that it is that you want. So for me, uh, honestly speaking is the key right to speak to, to know how to speak first of all what you need to ask for what you need in the world and to know how to speak when things aren't working for you as well so that you can create boundaries so that certain things stop happening to you this is enormous most people are not empowered enough in their voice to even know what they need right that's the first step we have to know who we are and we have to know what world we want to create and once we get there, then we have to empower our voices to ask for it, right? And I see this, I see this in my kids, but I see it in a lot of grownups, like something that you have to ask them to ask for the thing. Like, I can't get, I can't cut my food. I can't get my clothes on. Do you want to ask for help? Like, I can do, I can ask for help. And then they do it. But with, you know, even with people in business, you know, like, do you, would you like me to help you with that? Or do you want to keep banging your head against the wall? <laughs> exactly. And you're so good at that. You're so good at helping people. You know, like, but, but that is it, it, the fear of rejection, I think, is what stops most people. And I think that's what stops the voice in general. Most human beings at some point when they were a child expressed themselves freely and were told that it was not okay. And that's the beginning of the issue around the voice. And it happens super young when we're very vulnerable. So you said something in your honesty and someone either told you you were stupid 
you sang and someone said, you, you can't sing, you shouldn't sing, or your brother made fun of you, or someone, you know, someone told you that you sucked, right? Or you asked for something at a time or acted in a certain way that felt very natural to you and someone around you said, no, you're not allowed to do that. That's the majority of it. I'd say that third one, because parenting is such a difficult thing to do. But when, you're, when your child is just acting like a child without any, they don't know what they're doing is wrong or is, is not allowed or whatever, but they're just doing what consciousness is naturally doing through them. And then they get in trouble for it. They think, oh my God, I can't just follow my instincts. I have to, I'm being trained. Like I'm not okay. And that's, that's like the first big wound in the voice. 